Hello friends, how are you? I'm Shanik Bharadia. I'm back with another new video on Bustle Guideline. And as we have discussed in our previous video that there are three approaches to calculate capital requirement under internal rating based approach, which are slotting approach, FIRB and AIRB. And our today's video is in continuation of our previous video where we have discussed about slotting approach. So in this video, we will cover other two approaches which Bessel committee has provided under internal rating based approach. Under IRB framework, there are five key risk components which we need to understand. And these risk components are PD, which is probability of default, LGD, which is loss given default. And in Bessel 3, committee has introduced another component, which is AVCM. And this means asset value correlation multiplier. And fourth is M, which is effective maturity. And fifth is EAD, uh, which is exposure at default. And this we have covered in our previous video. And these risk component can be estimated by the bank or by the supervisor. And for estimating these internal estimate like PD, LCD, EAD, bank must consider all relevant information and method which are available. So now starting with probability of default. So basically this is the probability that an obligor will not meet his obligation. And it is a financial term describing the likelihood of default over a particular time horizon. And this time horizon is usually a year. And the risk of default is derived by analyzing the obligor's capacity to repay the debt. And PD is generally associated with the financial characteristics of the borrower such as inadequate cash flow or a high leverage. And there are basically three techniques to arrive at probability of default, which are internal default experience. Second is mapping to the external data. And third is statical default model. And bank can use one or more of these technique and usually bank have primary technique and they use other technique as a point of comparison and accordingly adjust the original PD. And the simplest approach taken by most of the bank is to use the external rating agency such as S&P Fitch or Moody's rating for estimating PD along with historic default experience. And usually PD is internal model to arrive at PD uh, external rating can also be leveraged. And for example, in case of loan, the obligor is the borrower and obligation is to pay a regular EMI. And PD reflects the probability that obligor will default or will not pay his obligation on time. So now let's move on to LGD. So LGD is the amount of loss which a bank will suffer in case an obligor fails to meet his obligation. So the difference between PD and LGD is that in PD we estimate what is the probability of counterpart is default and in LGD we estimate what will be the amount of loss if that counterparty actually defaults. And both PD and LGD are presented in percentage. So LGD is a percentage or a share of an asset that is lost if borrower defaults. And LGD is a facility specific because such losses are generally influenced by the key transaction characteristics such as how much collateral we have, type of collateral and also degree of subordination. And for example, if a client defaults on one crore loan and we can recover 75 lakhs from the collateral, then in that case LGD would be 25% as the loss is 25 lakhs. Now let's look at AVCM. So this is something which was introduced in Bessel 3 after 2008 financial crisis and full form of AVCM is asset value correlation multiplier for large financial institution. And as the name suggests, this is applicable for large financial institution. To understand this, let's look at flow chart. And in order to check if AVCM is applicable to particular counterparty or not, for that first, we need to check if that particular counterparty is financial institution or not. And if that particular counterparty is not a financial institution, then this AVCM is not applicable. However, if the particular counterparty is financial institution, then we will check if that counterparty or the financial institution is regulated or not. And if that institution is not regulated, then this AVCM is not applicable. But if that financial institution is regulated, then we will check for third criteria where we will check for the total asset size of the institution and this AVCM is applicable only for those institutions whose asset size or balance sheet size is more than 100 billion. So in nutshell, AVCM is applicable for regulated financial institution whose balance sheet size is more than 100 billion. 
and aim of the avcm is that to charge additional risk weight or maintain additional capital because if we are trading with large financial institution and if one big financial institution files for bankruptcy then it will have impact on whole banking industry and therefore we are required to hold more capital and multiplier given in basel accord is 1.25 which means that we have to multiply our original risk weight with 1.25 or uplift the original risk weight by 25% now let's move on to maturity so this is actually a relevant maturity which means normal maturity of a trade but after applying a cap and floor of 5 years and 1 year respectively so for example if there is a loan with maturity of 20 years but for risk weight computation we will cap it at 5 years which means we will compute risk weight considering that this loan will mature in 5 years similarly if there is another loan with a maturity of 3 months then for risk weight purpose we will floor it to 1 year and generally if, if all other parameters remain constant then higher the maturity higher will be the risk weight and vice versa and in some exceptional cases maturity can be less than 1 year and this 1 year floor will not apply to certain short term transaction which are fully or nearly fully collateralized with a original maturity of less than 1 year and in such case maturity can be less than a year and where we do not have maturity then in such cases we have to take 2.5 years as a default maturity and now if we look at our fifth parameter which is ear so this we have already discussed in our previous video so now we will see the difference between foundation approach and advance approach and generally bank that meets the requirement of estimation of pd will be able to use general foundation approach and bank that meets the requirement of estimation of pd ltd and ead will be able to use general advance approach so accordingly under foundation approach as a general rule bank must provide their own estimate of pd associated with each borrower grade but must rely on a uh, supervisory estimate for other risk component and the other risk component are ltd ead and maturity however under advance approach bank must provide their own estimation of pd ltd and ead and maturity however for retail exposure bank must provide their own estimation of pd ltd ead and there is no distinction between foundation and advance approach under retail exposure and for both foundation and advance approach bank must always use risk weight function provided in the basel framework for the purpose of capital requirement So now here we have come to the end of our video and I hope this must have helped you to understand key risk component for capital requirement and difference between foundation approach and advance approach and if you think this can help others then please share this with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more update on basel guideline and please provide your feedback in comment section below which will help us to improve and thanks for watching and god bless you all